They're members of the Grand High Zeta. Members of the or members of the board, the foundation board, alumni brothers, undergraduate brothers, and friends. What an amazing leadership seminar we are experiencing. What an amazing day it's been, and what an amazing fraternity we have. I am so pleased to be here tonight, and it's truly an honor and humbling experience to be standing before you this evening as Lambda Chi Alpha's Executive Vice President. Having had the experience to work for two of the men who were featured in that video, I got to courtside seat to see the very best in action. And I'm especially pleased that one of those men is with us tonight. George, thank you so much for hiring me back in 1988. And thank you so much for all you did in teaching me about Lambda Chi Alpha from a professional standpoint. George, it's greatly appreciated. In preparing for my remarks this evening, I asked a man much wiser than I what they thought I might talk about. His response was, keep it light, keep it short, and keep it from the heart. I will make every attempt to do all three. One of the things that I will be saying throughout these remarks, and I can't say it enough, Lambda Chi Alpha is a great fraternity. In some ways, it's a small miracle that I actually ended up becoming a member of Lambda Chi Alpha. You see, I started my academic career not at Butler University, but actually at Indiana University down in Bloomington. And while I was at Bloomington, I went through Rush and I joined another fraternity. Sorry to our brothers at Alpha Omicron. Um, I joined, I won't mention the name. But there, I learned all that was wrong with fraternities. I learned what was not to be done. I was a pledge. I was hazed. And just one example, one story that I like to tell about that experience, um, and, and this may let you know about what fraternity is or what fraternity could be and what fraternity shouldn't be. My pledge brothers and I were lined up in a row, and there were 25 of us, and so each of us had a letter, alpha, beta, and so they would start at one end and run through the Greek alphabet. Well, my last name was F, so I was closer to the front. But my pledge brother, who's, who got Mu, said Mu. They stopped, took us out in the front yard in our khakis and blue blazer, made us get down on all fours, and said, if you're going to sound like cows, we're going to treat you like a cow, and made us eat the grass. Shortly thereafter, I depledged, which was one of the smartest decisions that I ever made. The next smart decision I made was to transfer to Butler University. And during the summer, uh, after my freshman year, I was working on campus. One of my coworkers was a guy that befriended me, and we started to get to know each other. And he happened to be a member of Lambda Chi Alpha. So throughout the summer, he was rushing me. He said, "We really, we, you would be great. We think you should, you should come by. And I pushed back and said, look, I've had a fraternal experience, and it wasn't anything that, that was for me. I am sorry. But Craig Pierce kept pushing. And once the, school, once the academic year started, Craig said, why don't you come over to the chapter house? I said, really? You know, I, I've seen it. I know what it's about, and it's not for me. He said, we're different. Yeah, that's what the other guy said. We don't haze. Yeah, that's what the other guy said. Finally, Craig bore me down, and because he was a friend of mine at this point, and because I liked and respected Craig so much and didn't think that he would allow the things that had happened in Bloomington to happen to me or to him, I went to the house. And I can tell you from the first minute that I walked into that door, I knew I was home. It's where I belonged. Shortly thereafter, I accepted a bid. And I became an associate member. And I can tell you to this day that everything that Craig Pierce promised me came true. I wasn't hazed. It was the fraternity of honest friendship. And to this day, the majority of my brothers are still very close friends. Lambda Chi Alpha is a great fraternity.
On to expectations. That's the title of this. I'm starting out. I'm new. What things should you expect from me? And what things do I expect from you? The first thing that I will share with you, and there's just a few that, that I want to get out here early on, but one of the first things, the first thing that I will share with you that you can expect not only of me, but of the staff at the General Fraternity Headquarters, is that we will provide the best customer service to our undergraduates that we possibly can. We know that you are our customers. Your dues pay our salaries. And while we do what we do because we love this fraternity, we have an obligation to make sure that we fulfill your needs because we work for you. You're the boss. To that end, one of the things that I've already asked the chapter services staff to do, to do and I'm going to hold them to it, is that every chapter of Lambda Chi Alpha this academic year will get one educate will get one educational leadership. Let me back up. Every chapter of Lambda Chi Alpha will receive two visits this academic year, one in the fall and one in the spring. To the undergraduates here, I'm going to throw out an expectation. Use that experience. The educational leadership consultants are our link. It's a bond between the general fraternity and your chapter. And those men are so well trained in what they do. And I want you to take a look at the name of what we call them, educational leadership consultant. They are trained to be educators. They are trained in leadership. And I ask you gentlemen, when you go back, rather than being worried or concerned or scared, utilize these men to your advantage. They will help your chapter get better and they will help you as individuals to grow. If you're doing something wrong, they may point that out. But the reality is they are there to help you and take advantage of that experience. I guarantee you that it will benefit not only your, your chapter, but yourselves in the long run. The other commitment that I want to make to every chapter here is that during my term, and I don't know how long this will take me, but during my term, in the short term, how about that? In the short term, I make a promise that I will visit every chapter. I owe that to you to know and feel and understand what makes this great organization across the country work. So I'm going to be coming. How you doing? The second expectation that you can have of the General Fraternity staff and of Lambda Chi Alpha International Fraternity is that we will be financially responsible. Some of you may know that from a General Fraternity standpoint, we've struggled with the budget over the course of the last few years. We have a fiduciary responsibility to each of our members that we operate in the black. And I make that commitment that we will make that work and that when we are able to build reserves that we will be able to provide more programming for the undergraduates and as I said that's our mission is we work for you so we will be financially secure the third expectation that you can have of the general fraternity staff and of me is that we will assist the chapters with recruitment we will assist the chapters with retention and we will look at how we we expand Lambda Chi Alpha throughout North America. We have a great opportunity in today's market, that market being college campuses across the country. Your generation, and I mean this as, as the utmost compliment, is a generation of joiners. We can see this in the clubs and organizations that are growing on, on campuses across the country. One example that I can give you is is that I'll throw out is Campus Crusade. We see huge numbers of Campus Crusade and growing this organization. Well, if you look at the mission of Campus Crusade and if you look at Lambda Chi Alpha, they're not that far apart. What we're missing is the ability to get over that hump and teach the undergraduates who don't know what fraternities are about, what those men who or think that they know what fraternities are about, or, her, or are predisposed of not knowing what fraternities are about, like myself was, like I once was, we can get them over that hump and show them what we are about, I think that we will see numbers grow 
in incredible fashion. We promise the general fraternity will help you in recruiting those men. And recruiting those men isn't just about numbers for the sake of adding dollars to the coffers. It's about allowing more undergraduates the opportunity to experience Lambda Chi Alpha. We will help with your recruitment. The fourth area is communication. How do we communicate to the undergraduates? How do we communicate to the alumni? How do we, con how do we communicate to the university communities? How do we communicate? You can see we've got a lot of audiences and we have a lot of messages that we're sending out there. We have a commitment on how we will improve our communication and take it to each of those audiences and take it down to a level where we can be specific in sharing the information with you that you need. One step that we've already taken is a commitment, a financial commitment and a staff commitment to put in a program, and Ted mentioned it last night, the IMIS software program. This will allow us to share undergraduate news with undergraduates, alumni news with alumni, university news with our university partners, and taking that communication. And we will let you know what's going on. We will share with you. Because if we're not able, if we're not willing or unable to share the information with you, then how in the world can we ask you to be advocates for what we're trying to do, especially as it, especially as it relates to recruitment, retention, expansion? The fifth area that you can expect from the general fraternity, and it's so good that we have our foundation board members here tonight, is the area of involving our alumni. Ted read my bio or shared with that. I've been working in alumni relations for the last 15 years. I know something a little bit about it, and I know what a huge resource that can, it can be. And I'm not only talking about alumni taking out their checkbooks and, and increasing the financial position of, of the Educational Foundation. But what I'm talking about is having alumni volunteer and work with our undergraduates. I'm talking about alumni providing mentoring opportunities. I'm talking about alumni who are willing to help you in that entry-level job assisting our undergraduates. And the truth of the matter is, as you see all the alumni who are here tonight and all these alumni who volunteer, they do it for you and they do it because they want to ensure that you undergraduates have the same opportunity to have the same experience that we all had. We will involve the alumni to the benefit of the undergraduates. Those are the five expectations. Customer service from the general fraternity, we will be financially secure, we will communicate, we will help you with recruitment, and we will land on solid ground as it relates to involving our alumni. That's what you can expect of us. Lambda Chi Alpha is a great fraternity. But you don't get off that easy. I have some expectations of the undergraduate members. First expectation that I have of the undergraduate members is you need to replace yourself. You have an obligation to make sure that you, when you leave the chapter upon graduation that there is someone there to serve in your stead. And you do this the same way that Craig Pierce did it for me. You become people's friends, honest friends, and you turn them into brothers. I ask each and every one of you to make sure that you replace yourself. And we'd certainly be thrilled if you replace yourself many times over, but be sure to replace yourself once. I expect that of each of our members. Second, live up to the obligations. There are a lot of perks and benefits of being a member of Lambda Chi Alpha. There's also obligations and responsibilities. You take many oaths. You take them in the associate member ceremony. You take oaths during the officer ceremony if you're an officer. And you take a few oaths during the ritual. Live up to those oaths. Live those oaths. It's your responsibility to do that. It's something that I'd like to call the Lambda Chi way. That that's the way that members of Lambda Chi Alpha behave and they're grounded in that spiritual foundation of living up the obligations that they committed to. Live up to the obligations. Number three, have fun. It's fraternity. <laughs> it's 
it's the greatest time of your life. Ask any of the alumni here tonight why they remain involved. Ask them about their collegiate experience. They'll tell you it was one of the best experiences of their lives. Enjoy it. It's a laboratory. It's a chance to make huge mistakes and laugh at them as you clean them up. Enjoy that time with your brothers. It's why we belong. And sometimes we take ourselves a little too serious. And I'm challenging you to have fun with Lambda Chi Alpha. And finally, my fourth thing, and I'm going to have to explain this a little bit, is be willing to take one more step. I'm going to share a little story with you. I'll try to speed it up. I know. Um, this is a life lesson that I learned, and I want to, par I want to pass it on to you all. Um, with an opportunity to, to not do what I did. Uh, when I was in high school, I was a pretty good runner, and I ran cross country. And the high school that I ran with, our chief rivals, um, there was a, a, the other top runner on, on our rivals team. His name happened to be Billy, so there was Bill and Billy. And when we would race, one of us would normally win, and we ran across, against each other several times during the course of the season. And one race, Billy would win, and one race, I would win. Well, the big meet of the season came up. And the week before that meet, I was out running, doing a tri trial run with, with my teammates. And I stepped in a hole, and I twisted my ankle really bad. So I couldn't step off on it. I couldn't train the rest of the week. This was on a Tuesday. The race was on a Friday. On Friday, I went into the trainers. They taped me up. Go on out and do what you can do. So the race started, and we went off. And about the half, half, halfway mark, uh, Billy and I had broken away from the rest of the field, and it was going to be the two of us to see who won this thing. About three-quarters of the way into it, my ankle started hurting. And with each step, the pain got harder and hurt more and it hurt more. And I started doubting myself. And I took a look back, and I saw where the team was, and I did the quick numbers, and I thought, we're good. We, we'll, we'll win this race. Whether I finish first or second, we're going to win this race. And so I took one more step, and I thought, boy, this hurts. This hurts. If I crank it down one notch, I'll be able to come in second, and that'll be good. One more step. And then finally, that was it, and I, I backed off. And just as I said, Billy went on to win the race. I finished second. Team won. Yay. That's not the story. The story is afterwards... Billy came up to me, and we were revisiting re, re the race, and I told him about my ankle, you know, my excuse. And Billy said, I have a question for you. Why did you slow down when you did? And I said, well, my, my ankle was hurting, and, and I just couldn't go on anymore. He said, you know, if you were taking one more step, I was going to slow down? I was unwilling to take one more step. I was willing to accept second place. My expectation for you is be bold, be strong, and be willing to take one more step. It will be you will be amazed at what that will do. And you won't have to live with this and be bitter 30 years later. I was going to say Lambda Chi Alpha is a great fraternity, but it is. We have challenges in front of us, and I want to share a story with you that I've always found inspirational, and I hope that it will have some meaning for you as well. It sums up the way that we can look at challenges that we might face. The author of this story is a uh, former columnist for the Chicago Tribune, and some of you might know that uh, he had a little problem, but regardless, it still has been inspirational to me, and his name was Bob Green. Can we get this done? What lies ahead of us? Can we, wa can we conquer that which seems arduous, if not impossible? Wapakoneta provides the answer. Small town Ohio, only a little more than 9,000 people live there. You'll find places like Wapakoneta all across North America. 
nothing in common with New York or Los Angeles or Chicago, not a capital of ambition or of lofty dreams, unless you know about this town and what happened there. In the 1940s, a boy went to Bloom High School. Not a flamboyant kid, not a loudmouth. There was an airstrip north of town, and when he was 15, he went out to that airstrip and signed up for flying lessons. Who would ever expect to hear from a kid in Ohio, from an Ohio town, like any kid in North America, like any town in North America, located by the highway? Would they go anywhere? Would they do anything? When the entire world considers something impossible, who would ever think that a silently self-confident kid from the side of the road in North America could prove the world so wrong? But this kid did. This kid from the airstrip grew up and on July 20th, 1969, became the first person in the history of the world to step on the moon. Neil Armstrong of Wapakoneta, Ohio. Don't ever say anything is impossible. Don't ever in North America or in Lambda Chi Alpha assume that if something is important enough, we can't find a way to do it. There's a little museum in that town. It celebrates what that boy who once lived there accomplished. One of the most amazing things in that museum can be found in the collection of newspapers from all over the world. Newspapers that on July 21st, 1969, the day after the moonwalk, announced on their front pages that this miracle had happened. Papers from New York, from Los Angeles, from Chicago, from London, from Italy, from Thailand and Germany, all those papers, like every paper in the world, reaching for superlatives to describe this triumph. And then there, then there was the Wapakoneta Daily News. The addition on that July date said quite simply, Neil steps on the moon. We have some very difficult days, and there are probably, we have gone through some very difficult days, and there are probably more ahead of us. And we're being asked by history to win a victory of the sorts for which there are no roadmaps. We are being asked to do something that no one can show us how to do. It's the opposite of easy. It's the opposite of a sure thing. We can do anything. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that. Sometimes the reminder is sitting on the right side of the road on an exit sign that tells us all we need to know, Wapakoneta. Thousands and thousands of towns like this all across North America. We can do anything. You think not, just look up at the moon. And finally, I'd like to conclude with a quote from Brother Harry S. Truman. I have studied the lives of great, and famous, great men and famous women, and I have found that the men and women who got to the top were those who did the job they had in hand. With everything that they had, with energy and with enthusiasm and with hard work. You can expect nothing less from me, and I expect nothing less from you. Lambda Chi Alpha is a great fraternity.